This is the Bible Ranger. We're going to be talking about the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, Part 1, Episode 55. This is called the White Horse, by the way. Also, they're in the Book of Revelation. And hopefully we're going to try to make this easy. All right, the Seven Seals. Note, the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse come out of the Seven Seals in the Book of Revelation, Chapter 5. John cries, because there's nobody, there's, he's in heaven, and there's nobody in the entire history of the earth that was worthy to open the seven seals. But Jesus, as the Lamb of God, was able to open them. Amen. Now the scroll, it talks about, it, sometimes it calls it the book, depending what translation, but it was really a scroll. Um, it has writing on both sides. <clears throat> and it has seven seals on this you can tell that these first four are horses this you can't tell but that would be under the altar and this is signs in heaven and coming of christ this is for the future teaching now in revelation chapter 5 verse 6 jesus is symbolized as a slain lamb with seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of god sent forth to all the earth we're not getting into that right now i just like this one right here where the lamb, the slain lamb, is bleeding, and his blood is covering all the continents of the earth. That's pretty cool. All right, the first seal. In Revelation chapter 6, verse 1, Jesus is the one who opens the seals um, because he's the only one that's worthy. Now, one of the living four creatures says, come and see. Now, the first seal is a white horse, and there's a rider on the white horse. Now, the identity of the writers, especially the first one, um, it's not 100% clear and certain in the, in the book of Revelation. So there's been a few teachings throughout the 2,000 years it's been written, or some theories of the identity of the rider of the white horse. Now, these are some theories, or four major ones. Or The first one is that he's the Antichrist. The second one, is that he's actually Jesus Christ. The third one is that he's the Pope. And the more current one I've heard about, that is the coronavirus. So we're going to cover these, and we're just going to cover them in reverse order. All right, the coronavirus, which in Spanish it means crown. That's corona, crown. And it's conquering over the, the lives of the people. No. That is not the correct interpretation. Just, be, just because something seems to fit here and there and there's a little match. Later on, I'll go into something called eisegesis and exegesis when you're interpreting the word correctly and you're putting your own feeling into the interpretation. But that's for a later study. So I wouldn't even pay mind to that. That would be number four. Number three is the Pope. Now, he's been a suspect for hundreds of years. I mean, you can't blame people. Even I believe that at one time. You had the Inquisition. You had the indolences of the Catholic Church. The primary color of the Pope is white. He carries a bow, which some people say that crucifix, that long staff crucifix is like a bow with no arrows. And he's supposed to be Christ on earth. He wears a crown. This is something like this is what he wears. And there's many symbols associated with Babylon, Babylon mystery, religion in the Catholic Church. So I can see, I can definitely see why he is considered the Antichrist in some interpretations. And I believe that for many years. And if you kn know this or not, this picture comes out of one of the Jack Chick publication books, which I grew up with that. And I'm sure they might have something to do with something along the way, but that's not clear right now. So no, I will say that is not the correct interpretation of the writer of the white horse. Number two, Jesus Christ. Yes, he does come in a white horse at the second coming. He does wear a crown. And it's, it's believed in this interpretation that if, that if the, the, the rider on the white horse is Jesus Christ, that he's conquering the world with the gospel. That's what they're saying. Now, all the other horses are judgments. So it wouldn't make sense that Jesus is not the judgment. He's just passing out the gospel and then the other three are judgment. Um, to, to go with the flow, um, number one would have to be a judgment too. 
and I'm going to talk about the crown in a little bit when we get to the next one. So if anything, one of the requirements of the Antichrist showing up in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, is that the love of many will wax cold. And the second, and this is one of the reasons the Antichrist is going to be coming because there's a coldness among the believers in this world. So if Jesus Christ is coming with the gospel and he's conquering by his word, it doesn't fit with the love of many will wax cold. You would think if Jesus Christ himself is pushing the gospel out there, there's a tremendous revival and the Antichrist would not be able to come because of this verse here in 2 Thessalonians. All right, so I'll explain more about the writer in the next um, in the next slide, but this one is definitely a no. It's not Jesus. Even though some people do say that, it's not correct. Let's go on. All right, so now we come to number one. I do believe that the Antichrist is the rider on the white horse. And when you compare, you do a teaching on Matthew 24 and Revelation chapter 6, it's a parallel teaching, okay? They correspond with each other. For example, look at this graph below. By the way, the teaching of Matthew 24 and other Gospels um, is called the Olivet Discourse. And we'll do a teaching on that in, in the near future. But Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5, they talk about careful do not be deceived a false christ with a plural and then revelation chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 it talks about the seal of the first horse a rider so putting those together alone they're telling you that he's a false christ thus antichrist so in b here number two all the other horses are judgments so you it would make sense that seal number one is also a judgment and Reason number three is that Jesus is coming at the end of the three and a half years after the seals and the trumpets and the, and the, and the bowls. And some people call them the, the vials. So after all that, then Jesus comes. Not the first seal. That didn't we, we make any sense. And then after that, soon after that, that Christ comes is the beginning of the millennium, which is the reign of Christ for a thousand years. All right, so reason number four, in Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, the rider has a bow and he has a crown. Okay, now let's talk about the crown first. The crown is given to him, which means that God is allowing it. Okay, he's permitting it for a short time. And then if you, in, in Revelation 19, 12, is when Jesus is coming back and there we are there with him. Okay, and he is on a white horse and he does have a crown. And in Greek... There's actually two different crowns, okay, for this particular two verses. Now, the crown that Jesus is wearing, oh my, I'm going to try to read this in Greek. I can barely speak English, so forgive me. It's called diadema, okay, or, or diadema. It's, it's, a, it's a kingly crown, okay? And that's the Greek word for it. Please look it up. Don't take my word for it, but that's it. I'm, I wouldn't put any false information on this. And then... For Revelation chapter 6, verse 2, that crown that the Antichrist has is a wreath. And that's Stephanos. I said that one right. Like when you go to the Olympics and you get uh, a wreath, basically like this. Okay? And the bow is not explained, is not mentioned that he has any arrows. So knowing this, no arrow, no arrow is mentioned. So it's probably a bloodless military type conquering okay maybe by threatening them maybe in the bible says that the antichrist overcomes many by flattering tongue and he's very deceptive okay and maybe that's just his political side that's all we're guessing but that's a good educated um guess according to what we know in the bible so there are two reefs jesus is coming with the kingly crown up here and the antichrist is coming with a reef type crown so it's not the same all right, so when is this and how long, okay? I'm going to tell you something that you might, it might surprise you, okay? In the last days, these tribulations, okay, it's considered to be the 70th week of Daniel. I haven't taught that yet, okay? And we'll, we'll mention that later in a different video. Um, a week in Daniel's prophecy is considered seven years. The covenant that the Antichrist agrees with many 
which is Israel most likely, and many others, many, many others, probably other Muslims agreeing to this, not attacking Israel. It's going to be for seven years. The Bible does say that and is very clear. That's the book of Daniel, chapter 11, I believe. Uh, maybe maybe 12. However, the tribulational judgments, okay, it doesn't say anything about being seven years. It could be. I'm not saying that it's not, okay? But we know for sure that the tribulation period that many call the Great Tribulation is definitely for three and a half years or 42 months or 1260 days. We know that for sure. But it's possible and prob maybe probably that it could be seven years long, okay? But sometimes we just say the beginning of birth pains, which means there's always trouble, there's always wars, but it's going to get worse. But for sure, the, um, the three and a half years is def definite chaos. All right, so just giving you a possibility that it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible, but the movies, the books, they all say seven years of tribulation, seven years of tribulation. I mean, it's like continuous, but it's not biblical, okay, to prove it 100%. So all I want, you, all I want us to be is to be, or look, look for the signs and be watchmen on the wall. That's my goal. All right, so the main horse, the main white horse, is when Jesus is coming back. And that's mentioned a few times in Revelation. But the clear one is, is Revelation chapter 19. And this is when Christ comes back, he's going to destroy the Antichrist. And there's no more rule for the Antichrist. He's done. So in order for you to come back with Christ, you have to enlist in his army. So you have to repent. And you have to let him be Lord of your life. Let him be the general of your life. Okay? So if you found this video to be helpful, I appreciate it if you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. That will help us spread the gospel through these videos. And you'll partner with me in this. I appreciate that very much. And this is the Bible Ranger, keeping the Bible simple yet rich in content. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.